Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. Today we have a second generation Chevy S10 ZR2 inside the studio. I want to go over some of the things I would think about if I was doing 100k service. Let's talk about it. Now if we're going to be talking about the specific service interval for 100,000 miles or every 100,000 miles on these trucks, we would want to say you're going to start off by checking the spark plugs. The spark plugs are going to be iridium spark plugs and generally those are going to wear down over time much slower than the actual other spark plugs that they used to use back in the day, but they still need to be serviced. Theoretically every 100,000 miles is when you want to replace these, but typically you'd want to actually check them before that. With that said, when you're replacing the iridium spark plugs, it's always a good idea to make sure you replace your wires at the same time. If you don't replace the wires, well then there's a possibility that you might have resistance in the wire, or maybe even those wires are just kind of disintegrated over time. If you were to check the wires, you can kind of give them a little squeeze and a little twist, and if it seems like everything's still kind of soft, well then that's usually pretty good, but generally, like I said, you want to replace the wires at the same time as you're replacing your spark plugs. Your spark plugs are going to be located on either side of your engine. At the same time as doing the spark plugs on these trucks, it's also recommended to replace your fuel filter. That's something that you're going to end up replacing every 100,000 miles. Theoretically, it might be a good idea to do those at the same time as well, especially as the truck gets older in age slash mileage. That's going to be along the driver's side frame, and you're going to be able to access that, but you want to make sure you have a nice collection bucket, some hand protection, and of course, eye protection. Now I know what you're probably thinking. All these things that I've mentioned so far kind of fall under the lines of doing a tune-up on your truck. Yeah, you're right, it is. So with doing the tune-up on your truck, what you'd want to do is come right to your air filter. That's going to be the next thing that we're going to take a look at. If you were to remove the mounting screws and lift this up, that's where your air filter is going to be. You want to take a look at it and make sure it's clean and free of all debris. You also want to make sure that there isn't a mouse or anything living inside the air filter box. It's very possible and very probable that you probably see some acorns in there. If you do, you need to make sure you get all that debris out of there. Double check your air filter to make sure that it doesn't have any little nippings or bite holes inside of it. And of course, if it's dirty or has an issue, you need to replace it ASAP. Overall, it's just a good idea to do these approximately every year anyway, but at 100,000 miles, why not give it a look? Speaking of the air filter, as the air is getting sucked through the air filter and getting cleaned out, it's going to be getting drawn into the engine. It's going to have to pass this right here, which is your mass airflow sensor. If the mass airflow sensor is dirty, it's not going to be able to read the proper amount of air that's getting drawn into your vehicle to get mixed with the fuel, so you're going to notice low fuel economy. This is going to be very common, especially in older trucks. So what I would recommend to do would be to remove this from here, and you would clean your mass airflow sensor with a specific cleaner. Don't use regular parts cleaner. And don't forget about your PCV valve. That's right over here on your driver's side valve cover. Pull this out. You can give it a little wiggle. If you hear a rattle, usually it's pretty good, but typically you'd replace it every 100,000 miles. Now since we're right over here by the air filter housing, why not take a look at our fuse panel? Just go ahead and unscrew this right here, lift this up, and you want to take a peek. If you see any colors underneath there, or if it looks like it's slimy in any way, well then there's a possibility that you have a, either have corrosion or even some type of debris inside here that might cause restriction, which of course would be an issue for your electrical components. Also of course, if you were to see a mouse nest or anything, that's something you're going to want to take care of ASAP. Let's go ahead and put this back on here, close it up nice and tight, and then we're going to move our way over to the battery. You also want to make sure you check your truck's battery. You can do that simply by using a multimeter, which almost everybody has one of these laying around the house, and you come over and you test your two terminal ends. Typically with your multimeter set to voltage, you want to make sure that you have at least 12 volts in there. If you're up at 12.4, you're doing alright. If you're under 12, well then you either need to service your battery or even replace it. So now let's talk about the fluids under your hood. I'm going to start off by talking about your coolant. Chevy recommends it to be serviced slash replaced at 150,000 miles. Yeah, the coolant inside there is designed to last an extremely long period of time, but typically over months or even mileage, the coolant's going to break down inside here. It's always a good idea to make sure that you check and maintain your coolant. You want to make sure that it's full to the top, and of course you want to make sure you check the freeze point every once in a while. Essentially the freeze point for your coolant should be negative 32. Even though Chevy doesn't recommend servicing your cooling system till 150,000 miles, it really only makes sense to me to flush it every 100,000 miles. That way there, you know you've got good cooling in there. You're also going to want to make sure you check your transmission fluid. That's going to be super important for the shiftability of your truck. If the transmission fluid's brown or even low or anything like that, that's something that you're definitely going to want to look into slash maybe service. Typically to do that, you would drop your transmission pan and then of course replace the filter while you're in there. Place all that fluid, put it back up, and what you'd want to do is make sure that the fluid's full up here. 
When you service your transmission or even check it if you need to add a little bit, you're going to be using Dextron 6 transmission fluid. When you're checking your truck's transmission, it's best to do it while your truck's at normal operating temperature. You also want to make sure that all your wheels and everything's on flat level surface. Another important aspect of overall maintenance on your truck is going to be checking your oil. That's something that you're definitely going to want to check a lot, and it's also something that you're going to want to be at least servicing every three to 5,000 miles, depending on what type of oil you use. To do that, you would just come right over here to the dipstick that says engine oil. You would remove it, wipe it, check the condition of the oil inside there. Make sure it's nice and clean and you definitely don't see any metal. If it looks as though it's dirty, it's something that you're going to want to service. And if it looks as though it's low, you're going to want to obviously add a little bit, if not service the oil. You're also going to want to make sure you check your power steering fluid. That's going to be located right here under this cover. If you were to give it a little twist, you can pull it right up and it's going to show you a dipstick. In between the little hatches right there is going to be the optimal place for it to be. As you can tell, this one's a little bit low, so of course I would want to add some. And it actually looks like it's very clean, so I'm not necessarily worried about flushing it. But if you found that your system was contaminated or you found some foam inside your power steering, that's definitely something that you'd want to flush and or service. Don't forget about your brake fluid. That's going to be located right off your driver's side firewall here. And of course, it's going to be dot three inside there. When you're checking it, you can look through the side. If you were to put a light on the other side, you can see where your level's at. As you can tell, our brake fluid's way down near the minimal here, so that's telling us that we either have a brake fluid leak or even our brake pads are low. This might not be the case for you, but if it is, you could check those things. And then of course, if you find everything's fine, come right up here and you can add your fluid. It couldn't hurt to take a peek inside there and make sure you can see the condition of the fluid itself. It should be kind of a yellowish color. If it looks like it's brown, it's definitely been in there for way too long and it really only makes sense to flush the system. And of course, one last fluid under the hood, something that's very important, would be your washer fluid. We've all been driving down the road and something kicks up and you need to, of course, use those squirters with your wipers. If this is empty or low, you might find that you have an issue seeing out that windshield. It's always a good idea to top that off every time you get a chance. Before we get out from under the hood, there's just a few more things that I like to pay attention to for a 100,000 mile check over. I would of course want to inspect my serpentine belt. That's the belt that's going to run across the entire front of your engine and it's going to go around all the pulleys. If you find that the backing of your serpentine belt looks like this, well that's kind of an indication that it's definitely worn. But if you were to take your serpentine belt and give it a little twist, theoretically if you could see the other side, you want to check those ribs and you want to make sure that you don't see any cracks in them. If you see dry rock cracks that go ch -ch 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 -ch, more than six cracks within an inch, typically you'd want to replace that belt. But generally, if the belt looked like this, just by looking at it as it is, this is something that I would want to replace. Before I would just go ahead and buy a belt, I would also want to grab onto it. I'm going to give it a little tug, and I want to watch that tensioner over there on the passenger side. If it looks like it's stuck, or even I can't pull on the belt at all because the tensioner doesn't move, that tensioner needs to be replaced. While we're still right here, let's also talk about this fan right here. There's a fan clutch that's located right in there, and that kind of activates this fan with the heat of the engine. If this is loose in any way, well then more than likely the fan clutch is no good. That would be something that you would want to service as well. Just something that I like to point out. Real quick, let's also talk about checking all of your hoses while we're underneath the hood. Generally, there's going to be a lot of hoses. Typically, they're probably going to be coolant hoses. And of course, if you were to come over to the passenger side, you're going to be able to see your lower coolant hose. On the driver's side, you have your upper coolant hose, which is right next to the actual air filter housing itself. And all the way back at the firewall, you might notice these hoses right here. These lead into your heater core. You want to make sure all these are nice and soft. If they're dry and brittle or cracked, or they look like I have a tear or a rub mark, it's something you want to replace. If you have a coolant leak, that's definitely going to be an issue, and you might have an overheating problem in your truck. So now let's get out from underneath the hood for a little bit, and let's talk about the tires. Firstly, of course, you're going to want to check that tire pressure, because if your tires are underinflated, obviously that could be an issue. Come right over here to the valve stem, remove the cover, check the tire pressure. It should be 30 PSI. It doesn't matter what the tire says on the side. Once your tire pressure is set, let's move along to checking your condition overall. Take a look at that tread. That's going to be one of the most important aspects of the tire itself. You want to look to see if you see any dry rot in between the treaded area. You also want to check the depth of the treaded area. And yeah, some people will have one of these nice gauges right here that'll kind of tell you exactly where you're at. Not everybody has them. So if you needed to, and you're worried, try to figure out what 2 30 seconds of an inch is. If you find yourself a nice shiny penny like this, you can measure from the top right there to the top of Lincoln's head. That's approximately 2 30 seconds, which in all honesty, that really isn't very much tread. But if you have that overall, people will tell you that your tires are still fair. 
Just looking at this tire right here, I can tell you that this is in no good condition. It's definitely something that I would want to replace, not just because of all the dry rot that's completely going around the entire tire, but also because of the tread itself. It's worn low in a lot of areas, and it's higher in other areas. I also notice the way that it's worn. It's definitely worn more on the inner edge rather than the outer edge. So that's kind of telling me that there could be an issue with the alignment. With that said, let's look at the front end. So what we're gonna do now is just get a jack underneath that lower control arm. You want it so it's supporting the tire off of the ground, but it's also loading the suspension as if the truck is still on the ground. The next thing that I would do is carefully grab it 12 and six like this, and I'm gonna carefully shake this like that. If you can feel a whole bunch of movement like this, well then obviously that's an issue. Typically if you have that type of movement, it might be an upper ball joint, a lower ball joint, or even possibly a wheel bearing. We can grab it like this, give a little wiggle side to side at three and nine. If you find movement in this direction, it could be an inner tie rod, an outer tie rod, potentially a lower ball joint, but it also could be the wheel bearing as well. Speaking of wheel bearings, if you grab the wheel, give it a nice spin, you wanna try to listen. That little bit of scraping noise is just the brakes, they're settling in there. But if you hear a roar, roar, like a howling noise or like a grinding noise, then that's more than likely the wheel bearing that's inside there as well. Let's take a look at the front end. We talked about the tie rod ends and of course the ball joints, but we also need to take a look at our sway bar links. That's this area right here. These right here are just uh, rubber and they get dry rotted over time as you can tell along this area. If this continues to get worse, it could potentially fall out of there and then of course the sway bar can move around, it might cause a clunking noise and it might also cause poor steering slash stability on the road. You're also going to have your shock up in the front here. That's something that you're going to want to pay attention to. If it looks like it's rusted, it's probably definitely very old. And if it looks like it has fluid that's running down it, then typically that means that it's no good. When you replace these, you replace it as a pair with the other side at the same time. While you're underneath looking at your front end, it really kind of makes sense to go ahead and grease the front end. There's going to be a whole bunch of grease fittings on your steering system, but definitely there's going to be some on your upper ball joint, lower ball joint, inner and outer tie rods, and then of course underneath this shield right here, you'll probably find a few others. While you're looking underneath your truck, it really only makes sense to see if you see any fluids coming down. If you see any fluids, you need to kind of figure out what's going on. Is it a transmission fluid leak, an oil leak, maybe a differential fluid leak, any of the like. Whatever it happens to be, it's something that you're either going to need to clean and then recheck, or even clean and then service. While we're under here, we also want to make sure we check our differential. All these vehicles are going to have a rear differential, and the check plug's going to be on the passenger side, right on the forward aspect of it. So you would pull this, check the fluid, make sure it looks good. If it needs to be serviced, because, well, for some reason you haven't been keeping up with it, now's the time to do it. A lot of these vehicles, especially on the ZR2s, which is what we have, are going to be four-wheel drive, so you're gonna have a transfer case in the center. That's something that you're obviously gonna to wanna to check the fluid on and make sure it's up to date. And then of course, you'll have a front differential in the front. That's gonna be something that you'd also wanna check. Any of these are overdue on their maintenance. It really only makes sense to service them because well, that's the drive line of your vehicle. While we're under here, you can typically take a quick look at the brakes. Generally, if you look up along this area, you're gonna be able to kind of see where your pads are at. If it looks as though the pads are worn very thin, it really only makes sense to go ahead and remove the wheel and thoroughly inspect your brakes. You definitely don't want to have weak or worn low pads. That would obviously be an issue for your braking ability. Talking about the brakes, you're also going to have flex hoses. Those are going to be in areas that tend to pivot or move, so that's something that you want to be in good condition. Give it a little grab, twist it around and make sure it's not firm or stiff in any way. You also want to check the couplers, which is the areas where the rubber kind of meets into the actual lines themselves. Make sure they're not rotted away. If either the brake hose or the coupler that's attached to it is rotted or looks like it could be an issue, that's something that you want to replace. And of course, take a peek at all your brake lines. There's going to be a whole bunch of brake lines because the master cylinder is located at the front of the truck, up inside the actual engine compartment, and everything else is located outside of the truck. So if you see lines that look like this, that's obviously not the worst condition. I've definitely seen worse but that's something that you'd want to pay attention to because if I was to grab this and give it a nice jaunt, like maybe I caught it on something while I was driving, there's a possibility that this could actually break. So check all of your brake lines and make sure that they're in good condition. You also want to test the functionality of your e-brake. You want to make sure that it holds completely. Typically what can happen on these as the trucks get older in mileage is the cables themselves will get rubbed through in some way and then of course they'll build up rust and then they might not function properly. If your cable's no good, it could hold up your e-brake, in which case you'd have overheating brakes, and of course they'll wear out sooner. You wanna check the entire cable. There's gonna be one for the right rear, one for the left rear, then of course they're gonna run up along the driver's side frame of the truck as well. 
For checking your emergency brake shoes, you'd obviously want to have to remove the wheel, remove your brakes completely, and then at that point you'll be able to see your shoes from the other side. Assuming that your tires are in decent enough condition, it would make sense to go ahead and do a tire rotation, especially if you find that your tires are a little bit feathered. To do the tire rotation on this, what you'd want to do is you'd want to take your rear tires and bring them straight forward. Take those front tires and crisscross them as you make your way to the rear. Once you've done that, go ahead and mount them on there and then torque them to 100 foot-pounds. Don't forget to check your spare tire. And let's get inside the truck because that's where we're going to be spending the majority of our time and just make sure everything works from here. Honk the horn, test all your lights. You want to make sure you have directionals, high beams, brake lights, reverse lights. It might help with a second person. And of course, you want to make sure that you check your four-wheel drive. That's something that you would want to do on like a loose gravel road. Why not check those wiper blades? Okay friends, so that's pretty much what I've got for you for a 100k service on this second generation Chevy S10 pickup truck. This is the ZR2 model, so it is four wheel drive, but a lot of the stuff that I showed you is kind of going to be comparable either if you have two wheel drive or four wheel drive. There's going to be things that I told you that you should replace, such as your coolant, your spark plugs, your wires, amongst other things. And then of course there's things that you're just going to want to kind of keep an eye on. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, smash on the like button for me, it would mean the world. While you're at it, leave me a comment, because I always love to hear from you. And of course, subscribe, ring the bell, that way there you can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks.